All right. So, Marcus, I've got a great question for you. A great question? You're going to like it. Am I? Yeah. What is the beauty of paid advertising? Oh, oh this, is, this is actually a beautiful question. Yeah. I think everything in marketing needs to be measurable, right? I mean, that, 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 that's the key. You can't, what you measure, you can improve. You don't measure it, you can't improve it. Paid is measurable. You know, it's through the metric of pay per click, generally speaking. As there's only three, matter, three numbers that matter in digital marketing, your cost per acquisition, so how much you wanna pay for a customer, cost per click to get someone to a website, and the conversion rate required in the funnel. That's it, you've got those three numbers you can forecast, which means you can take the risk out of marketing, which is, which is our why. That's why it's a beautiful thing. I actually also want to sort of challenge the, the organic <laughs> types, both social and search. Uh -oh. You guys can also work on a cost per click basis. Yeah. How do you yeah. do that? I might be wondering. Well, they've got. A, I was about to ask. How do you do that? <laughs> how do you? SEO. Okay. There's lovely SEO agencies out there going, pay me five grand a month and I will build links and yeah. organic traffic page will go Google. up. Yeah. But it's measured on Google. So, but if there's an uplift of organic traffic, you've paid five grand for one month's work. What's the uplift? Oh, 5,000 new organic visitors for increased rankings. Right. Brilliant. That's right. a pound a click. See, see, yeah. Perfect. You can do that. Here's the problem. They won't be able to do it month on month. So your five grand a month retainer starts looking pretty shit. And I think actually if you put everything through the metric of cost per click, you can pair apples to apples. And that's why more people should put more money into paid. And SEO agencies should be a little bit honest and say, hmm, maybe we didn't build any links this month. You didn't give me five grand. Maybe the traffic would just stay where it is. Or mm. maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down. It's like the markets when SEO traffic goes up. That's down to us. We're fucking brilliant. When it goes down, our oh, penguin man or new Google algorithm. And it's just like, look, you can't have it both ways, yeah. guys. So social media, all, all organic, everything should be measured through the metric of CPC. And that's why I like and it. And then you apportion budget appropriately. Yeah. Well, once so it's you not just measure it all and then just put all the money into search, paid search. Well, no, exactly. Let's measure it all and then put the money with yeah. the conversion I mean, I, metric. I, 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 I employ yeah. SEOs, like, it, but I say it's got to be a business case for search engine optimization. Mm. I look at through the metrics that pay gives us. That's the beauty of paid. Click-through rate, right? Being number one in Google, click-through rate's about 30%. Okay? Mm. So you know how much traffic you're going to be getting. You can use the keyword planner. Being number one, mm. click-through rate, 30%. Here's how much traffic I've got. If you run paid ads to that, you've tested that traffic from that keyword. You know the conversion rate. So you can forecast, actually, if I get you from 10th, where you're getting a 1% click-through rate, to first a 30% click-through rate, this is what you'll get. But then you also need to scope out the work. It will require 20 backlinks, you know, better on-page SEO. How do you know what it will require? We do a gap analysis, the guys who are first. Yeah. But SEO people, I want to get on the stage of writing SEO, but they don't well, want me at the minute. I want to stand up and say that and say, guys, let's be transparent. Let's actually make a business case. But they don't want me to do that because the people that own big SEO agencies have got lots of staff and lots of mouths to feed. So they need to keep their five, 10 grand a month retainers going mm -hmm. to create more backlinks and more content. But it's mm -hmm. not transparent and it's giving you know, the marketing industry a bad name, quite frankly. But paid gives us the metrics and the tools to be able to shine a light on some of the less profitable things, such as SEO and social. That isn't me slagging you guys off no, today. No, no, you got, no, without you guys, paid, paid, paid is heartless and all the rest of it. But, <laughs> yeah. you know. I actually think paid has a, uh, not just from a, from a conversion point of view, I actually think it has a bigger part on brand than we give it credit for. I yeah. think you can test creative through paid to see whether or not yes, it works. Exactly. Whether the message, whether the image, whether the logo, the color schemes work, and you can iterate through exactly. paid and, and understand where, or use that wonderful word that you love every single day, I bet you do optimize exactly. the, the creative accordingly. And I yeah. think you can actually shape brands off the back of mm -hmm. paid and creative exactly. media. You see what I did there, right? Yeah, oh, you, you you're go. putting yourself Great. in the game. Yeah. What can I do? But you, 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 you need it's, both. It's, you need both to live. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I love marketing, right? Because it, yeah. it's a data science, but you also need yeah. the, the art, the creative, yeah. to actually sell. You need to press people's buttons and take the next step. Marketing's about selling the next step. Draw out yeah. the funnel, push them down there. Content will do that. The problem with content marketing, when it became a buzzword, everyone created cool content. Like, yeah, cool, this will go viral, right. Now we've got to market it, fuck. Well, what, how do we do that? I don't know. The way to actually do content marketing, like you said, is draw out a marketing strategy first. Mm -hmm. That determines the content to shove people down the funnel. Yeah, and, and as I said before, paid advertising is a perfect complement to yes. content marketing strategy. Exactly. Because one of the key elements, obviously, is, is promoting how do you get eyes on that content? How do you promote it? How do you bring people into mm -hmm. the funnel? And one way to do that is through paid advertising. I mean, I'm running link building stemmed from paying bloggers to write about content, which 
at, at the end of the day is not organic anymore. You're paying someone. Exactly. So you, if you put it into layman's terms, it it's means exactly that. It's pretty much You're paid. doing paid advertising. Yeah. Paid advertising. One thing I want to say that's being really like, it's, it's undervalued and I think you can do so much more of it is remarketing and retargeting. Yeah. 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 So actually yeah, you can get all your best content because take, take Google remarketing, right? Do you know how long you can follow people for? 90 days. No, 540. Oh. That's a year and a half you can stalk them. Now, if you stalk them with a crappy banner over your logo saying, hey, we're, we're here, we're still here, that's going to piss people off. If you follow them around with amazing thought leadership content, mm. wow, what does that do? Yeah. What we're doing in the B2B space is finding people on LinkedIn, those job titles are very influential people who are my client's target market, getting them to come to a landing page. They don't interact with the content the first time around, that's fine. We will then follow them for the next year and a half with really great content. And that's not just banner ads, right? Yeah. That's YouTube in-stream videos, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's Twitter, all the rest of it. But the trick is, is I always want to keep them on the merry-go-round. So I want them to click on that content. Guess what? Add it on for another 540 days. They're never leaving. They're always thinking about you. And it's a bit less intrusive than smashing up an email list. That, that's why I see fountain partnership ads every day, pretty mm. much, whenever I go yeah. into different yeah, It's too. always there. Yeah, I know. You, you mean, too. Maybe, maybe yeah. some, maybe I'm always thinking see? about markers, though. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Not really fountain. Just more markers. markers. That, that, that's the video. Yeah. Like, that I, should be a campaign. <laughs> more Marcus. Yeah. No, I, I want less <laughs> Marcus. I, I'm fed up with being the face of fountain now. I want to just, so we're creating lots of videos of all mm. of my, my yeah. lovely team, and then they can follow people around. But it's mm. that thing. You stay front of mind. And because it's pay-per-click, it costs bugger all. Like, that remarketing, our list is about maybe 12,000. Maybe they, they, have, they see our ads 100,000 times a month. That probably costs us about 300 quid. It's absolutely nothing, right? Mm. But I'm staying in front of mind for you, so much so that I'm sitting here right now because probably if I don't remarket to you, you might have forgotten about me yeah. and gone like, mm. oh, well, there's other digital marketing <laughs> agencies out there. Someone I spoke to more recently, you know, better looking, can grow a beard, those sort of things. So. I like a clean shaven, clean yeah. shaven guy. I think in terms of scalability, <laughs> measurability. So you're both here. Paid, <laughs> paid is beautiful. You can't grow a beard either, can you? I just no. realized. Do Neither can I. I go <laughs> actually. Do that. <laughs> nice. Sorry. Nice. 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 Comrades. I just wanted to be the one <laughs> Harry with the here. best yeah. stubble here. So that's yeah. why I invited oh you. God. But yeah, look, ultimately, like, I don't, when I talk about lots of creative stuff and marketing, I'm a bit cynical here. We're just glorified salespeople. Mm. We've got to deliver ROI to our clients. Mm. Paid is great because it's measurable. We can improve it and we can forecast. That's the big thing. Like Most people marketing don't do forecasting. They're like, oh yeah. I call it faith-based marketing. It's yeah. like, yeah, I reckon we get you a good return on investment. You reckon? Well, what the fuck does that mean? Like, yeah, you know, I've done some great stuff for other people. Look at my trophy cabinet. You know, I've won some great RAR awards. Okay, but actually, look, we're doing digital, right? So I know if I spend 100 grand on AdWords, it's a pound a click, there's 100,000 clicks. What's the current conversion rate? And does that fit in with the CPA? Like, you can do all that, but they're lazy bastards. They won't do it, mm. which is why, you know, we've got a bad rep, unfortunately. I, yeah. I used to play, well, I used to go around, I did a talk a couple of years ago, and I used to get on the stage, and I thought I'd warm the crowd up by playing a word association game. I'd say, right, say the first thing that comes to mind. I show a picture of a cat, and they shout out dog and salt, and they say pepper. Then I have one word, and it says marketing agencies. And it was like, boo, fuck mm. you. And it's like, wow. So I was like, okay, guys, let's, let's, let's take a look at this. Why, why is it that, you know, you're treating me like I'm a politician or a banker? Mm. I said, look, okay, show of hands, who here has lost money with a marketing agency? Everyone puts their hand up. This is a room full of business owners. I said, well, there you go. Mm. It's my mission to stop that. I want to take mm. the risk out of marketing. I was Marcus Hemsley, Fountain Partnership. So and I began. I, I know that but you were a politician though. Oh, shit, no, God, you know what? Oh, anyone's watching this going, that's, oh, I thought this guy's the, okay. Now they're like, right, well, like, start trolling, you know. That's the next round table. Yeah, yeah. We were talking politics yeah, earlier on, you know, yeah. various rags people read. You know. So who do you, I know that you, because we, we talked to you before, and you, you, you will turn, because obviously you forecast, mm. so you will turn business down. Who do you turn down and why? And what do you say yeah. to them? Do you say, that's it's, it, it's you've got no hope? Or do you suggest other yeah. routes? Do you it's, suggest that uh, they... So, so yeah, I last looked at it, it was about 60% of people we do turn away. Because when okay. we first pick up the phone to them, we say, look, what does success look like to you? How many customers do you want? How much do you want to pay for them? Get their cost per acquisition. We then quickly look at the cost per click. And if the conversion rate required is too high, so say someone's like, oh yeah, I want to pay 10, 10 quid for a new customer, and the cost per click is three pounds, it's like, you need a 33% conversion rate. I said, look, digital marketing isn't for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. how are you currently making money? Oh, I'm selling stuff on Amazon and eBay and that's got, you know, I pay them a commission fee. You need to look at scaling that up then. 
You know, I mean, like, take Gary Vee. I'm going to slag off Gary Vee a little bit. I, I love some of his videos, but he's a little bit of a fluff monster. He's like, everyone should be doing this and doing that and great ideas. But I, I look at the numbers, actually. For a lot of SMEs, for a lot of startups, a lot of kids in their bedroom he's speaking to, actually, the numbers don't fucking stack up, right? Know how much, what your cost per acquisition is, not the cost per click. Mm. And then if the conversion rate required is too high, and that, to be honest, the average conversion rate on the internet's 2%. Yeah. You know, mm. like anything above sort of 6 or 7 like especially e-commerce as well a lot of kids selling stuff on, on e-commerce like not yeah it's more than like one or two percent it's not going to fucking happen so don't yeah. set up that company right yeah. you know go yeah. for high ticket items mm. you know like relatively good margins that's the, the sort of thing customer that, lifetime yeah. value that will and do more of what's working already right you're mm. in business now because something's worked just do a bit more of that. And that's the thing I said to you yeah. earlier on. Like, actually, it's the boring stuff. It's reselling to your current yeah. database. Like, who are your current customers? It's easier to upsell to them. What's your current sales process if it's mm. not e-com? Actually, yeah, well, we close one in four leads that come in. Cool, get it to one in two. That's much better. So I, I kind of give them that sort of advice. And that, but the basic stuff probably most people can do, which is cheap, is the remarketing. I'm going to bang mm. on about remarketing. and Hopefully GDPR won't smash it up too much. But... That's was, the thing. I always find it interesting when clients come over and they say, um, I'm thinking about doing some paid advertising, whether it's social or PPC, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you go, okay, fine. Obviously, they want sales, that, that wonderful euphoric term of sales. Yes. Um, but then they, th they, t they tell you your budget, their budget for you. Right. And it's usually a case where it's really, really small. Um, and you sort of have to re explain to them, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's what, what you put in is what you get out. Yes. And if you don't consider investing properly into paid advertising, you're not going to get the benefits. We're not always mm. going to get the, bene the better benefits as well. well. That's what I said is the outcome. I got yeah. fed up saying what's your marketing budget. It's the wrong way of looking mm. at it. You know, begin with the end in mind. How yeah. many customers? You don't really want pay per click. You don't want SEA. What you want is more customers. How many customers do you want? How much do you want to pay for those customers? You multiply that. Yeah. All of a sudden, you've got a marketing budget, and it's normally about four times what they had in mind. Yeah. Well, what was your marketing budget based on? That's what the board signed off. Okay, yeah. but you want to pay for an outcome. Oh. Because in their mind, marketing is still this sort of thing on the side that let's chuck a bit of money at some advertising and hope for the best. Yeah. And actually, we're in 20, it's 2018 now. Yeah. You know, we, 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 it's digital. We can we can track everything and forecast. So let's do that. Yeah. And it's it's a much better way of looking at it. And that's how we get around that discussion. And then yeah. if they don't want to have that, go oh well, I don't want to pay that much money. Okay, but you're buying an outcome. Like yeah. we'll fit our management fees in with the media spend. Yeah. You don't yeah. care how much money you give Fountain or Google. You just want an outcome, right? Yeah. And then we'll forecast, and we'll only take people on the, well, yeah, we, <laughs> the, the numbers, yeah, we back, we back people that are going to win, basically, you know. Do, do, we talked a lot about B two B and B two C, and I guess one of the benefits of B two B is often, well, I guess if for us we're offering a service where mm. the customer lifetime value can be yeah. huge. So, would you say that you know investing in paid advertising works better for B two B? Mm. or you know, from really. your experience? And we've got clients who are quite big. We've got big retailers. We've got Roman Originals as one. We've got one called Roseland Furniture, which is a challenger to Cotswold. So retail's a completely different beast. I mean, that, mm. I, I feel sorry for retailers. They, yeah, they, they lose money for nine months of the year and mm. this time of the year they've got to make it all back and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, paid works for those guys. You know, the CPCs tend to be lower. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of paid as well. It's done by bidding, right? The market decides. So if someone's paying that much for a click and they're getting return on investment, then they've got a better conversion rate, they've got a better offering, and that's why I think conversion's king. You've got the highest converting website, you can buy all the traffic, and that's why I say start with conversion rather than dicking around with click-through rate of ads. Mm. I think that's, that's the core. That's so why you need good copywriters. You need great copywriter, you need supported by an amazing brand, and you need a whole social and media strategy. <laughs> it's yeah. true, that's the why. The bolt on. <laughs> yeah. It's no, not the bolt no, on, no, 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 no. but it isn't. But you need, you need it all, and if you have it that, you will holistic. take market share. And I think that's the thing, I like what you said on comment about looking at their competitors because I show people look here's all yeah. your competitors right if I'm going into the ecosystem of like you know running Google ads up against these guys and I'm clicking trying to be a user their website smashes the shit out of yours like what are you mm -hmm. like, like you, we're not going to send traffic to it until you sort that out until you get a decent brand a decent voice some great copy all of it needs to work yeah. together mm -hmm. but you need to invest in it but it needs to be a business case for doing yeah. that right so you know if we do all of this, we'll, we'll, yeah, all four of us will come together, we'll mm. price up our services, but we'll do it in a performance model, i.e. based yeah. on how many customers you're going to get. And, performance driven. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and forecast it up front. That's how, you, you know, that's how I think marketing should be done. That's my mission to say, actually, we can forecast now. Like My dream is that in like 10, 20 years' time, someone says, oh, yeah, okay, I want to acquire this more customers through digital marketing. Okay, <laughs> let's go to some software that will forecast very accurately what's going to occur. 
assuming you hit these various conversion rates, which should be tenable. So and then there'll be no need for any of us. No, no, no. It'll be, but we, no I, I don't agree with that, man. Mm. I, th I think actually there's, there's still that human element. Like automation's bringing in the boring stuff of pay-per-click. Mm. You know, some stuff my guys do, like which is really monotonous spreadsheet driven, mm. like the stuff that humans don't like doing, machines should do. That's yeah. the automation. You know, like machines love things like I want to calculate like a massive like, mm. number, five times five million square root, bloody blood. Like a machine will love that, a human doesn't. But talking about why a vampire film really moved you or <laughs> why like it's really funny that Mitt Romney's yeah. wife went like that, Barack Obama's wife went like that, and yeah. Durex, like humans get that, and I yeah. don't think yeah. machines are anywhere near seeing why that's funny. That, I think that's the science art side of things. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's the case again, you know, you're talking to a human at the end of the at the end of the yes. at the end of the screen. You're not exactly. it, you can have as much automation as you possibly want and it mm. might help reduce the time factor of planning and organizing certain things, but mm. at the end of the at the end of the process, you're trying to convert someone who has who has their own mind and mm. without that sort of essence of consumer behavior or whether it's sort of looking back to look forward yeah um needs a person at the end other end of the computer to be able to establish that precisely so. uh, and that's where it's important like where automation comes and well we write scripts for google ads for our e-commerce clients yeah. when it's out of stock you know it will tell google to shop, stop firing those ads yeah you know if you're, if you're selling like you know ten thousand products that's not a job for a human to be doing yeah. it's not a good use of their time that's what machines should be doing in terms of writing the ad copy that's going to appeal to jane who reads the guardian who's 55 n yeah. no script's going to be able to do that you know it's, it's not going to happen anytime I've, soon and i think humans uh, i think this is where we can again to use the cliche think outside the box in terms mm. of how to pull people in and it, I think the same with choosing the right keywords for PPC as for content marketing. Google will, for example, you know, Google uh, AdWords tool will generate a bunch of keywords that are related, mm. but in some cases, you can think of other avenues to, 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 to get people's exactly. attention. Uh, th to that point, exactly, through mm. PPC, um, the greatest example is compare the meerkat, compare the market. Yeah. It stemmed from PPC ad copy or PPC bid, uh, exactly. keyword terms. Yeah. You know, no one bids on meerkat for a comparison, a price comparison site. Yeah. So some uh, ingenious uh, you know, planner or strategist or a, yeah. a, a, a media buyer thought about mm. the fact that actually meerkat market has a, uh, has, a new, has a sort of sound related if you spoke meerkat with a Russian accent, it sounds like market. <laughs> and that's how... Yeah. Yeah. That was know, me. <laughs> I, I, it surprised me. I, 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 I knew that there was something familiar about you with your accent. We've got into the impressions around there. Yeah, it's the time of the day for impressions. It's past four o'clock, as Frank would say to me. Whenever that happens, and I start I start to shift. You've done the duet. I've done it. I've done it. But I find that really interesting because that's where I find creative has a part to play in something. And I hate to say it, it might, might shoot me from across the room, but mundane, like PPC ad copy, is not as sexy as, let's say, a brand a brand campaign. But wow. it can be. Oh, wow. But it can be. Whoa. But no. I, no, I, I, I say that because that's, that's what probably the, the you know, everyday Joe blogs thinks. But mm. actually, you know, when you look at it from the compare the market example, it's really interesting because it actually shaped the entire brand strategy yeah. for an entire company. Right. Okay, so the way I say to that, the truth is, anything that's sexy is making money and making profit. <laughs> so it's it, it's all subjective. Like we run a control experiment. You can have sexy branding, ad copy, or mundane. Mm. Like I don't mind if my mundane guys lose, but if we run a, an A/B split and test, and you see the results, yeah, that's all I really care about. Yeah. Is ultimately, I mean, it's more the process of yeah. where people see, you know, you see an ad copy versus, mm. let's say, a video, as an example. Yeah, but I, I, I find it really interesting when. PPC can, or something like, you know, a paid activity can actually impact mm. so much a brand world that it actually forms the foundation of everything That's, that they do. It's cool, um, I it? don't think people realise that enough. Yes. Um, you know. And I think you can just, you can win through other avenues. So you could go down the, the, the uh, an obvious route of, let's say we're a copywriting agency, so we mm. can look at all the keywords related to copywriting agency and, uh, and split test and, and mm. you know, but but then there might be the human element, I think, and the creative side is thinking there might be people searching for kind of branding related things and trying to bring them in yeah. via that route. Yeah. Not saying that you should avoid going down the, the obvious route, and, and, you, mm. and you definitely should, but I think in some cases you can connect and bring in a wider audience mm. than just your, the specific mm -hmm. thing yeah. that you offer, and that's where you can kind of be creative, yeah, more yeah. creative yeah. perhaps than 
it's Google insight. at the moment. It's insight to way. inform idea, isn't it? It's, exactly. it's, it's not just idea of, you know, finger in the air kind of attitude. It's the information yeah. has to inform something in order to add that extra value. It's, it's why my staff finally lose their jobs. They get yeah. worried because we're working with the University of Edinburgh and their PhD department for machine learning. They're like, oh God, you're trying to replace us all. I'm speaking to Albert, AI, mm -hmm. and so it's like, no, no, no. Like, the, 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 the stuff where the software that my guys are working on in the University of Edinburgh, it watches session data, right? Because there's no point like my guys billing out £100 an hour to watch recordings for conversion of people interacting with a website and finding why people are dropping off. That should be automated. They don't really enjoy it. Someone said to me, I want you to outsource that to the Philippines. Well, I could do, and there's ethical issues and all the rest of it, but ultimately that's going to be replaced by a machine. But like you said, that insight, that lateral thinking of copywriting yeah. agency, fine. You know, a computer can spit that one out, but actually someone looking for a branding or some really interesting long tail keywords, exactly. and that's where, you're, that's where outbound and, and blogs, and that's why I don't think we're going to lose our jobs anytime soon, guys, off the back Good. of it. And even if we do, <laughs> then we can just all be str strategic consultants because a lot of people, yeah, don't I mean, do marketing I can be the well. Queen of England for, you know, yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I lose my job, I'm I don't <laughs> think it works like that. Oh, no, no, I, sure I, I got plans. Did, I got right. plans. That's <laughs> I've got, I've got a question. Yeah. Do you think uh, paid advertising is becoming too intrusive in some ways? I don't care. <laughs> I do, I do, that's what I say to them. No, no, no. Literally, all, 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 I, all I care about is the, is, is the bottom line. And if yeah, we have debates whether you should turn, we, we should do remarketing. People are like, oh no, don't, idiot. You know, maybe just stop it after thirty days. And it's like, who said like you've started remarketing to me now? Oh, they stopped after thirty days. Like, okay, I'm going to go and buy from them now. Basically, I run controlled experiments. And if I'm being too intrusive, fine, I'll dial it back. But I'll keep pushing that envelope, and it makes some of my guys a bit uncomfortable. They're like, "Oh, I wouldn't like that," and I always like hit them over the head and say, "You know, market research sample, not literally." Because they're like, I can so see that in a, in a client meeting. <laughs> no, but it's <laughs> that whole thing. I, we talked about this yeah. earlier on. Like, I wouldn't do that. Well, yeah. yeah, market research sample of one, load of bullshit. Put it to one side. So let's run. Let's use the data, run controlled experiments. It's becoming intrusive. Guess what? Is you know, you can clear your cookies. You can get ad blockers. You know, it's a free world. If you don't, if you yeah. can't be asked to learn how to do that, yeah. then you deserve to be marketed hard too. And you know, and I say marketing hard, but like, oh, I don't like that pushback. Fine, but I'm serving you with content you've shown interest in, mm. with ad copy that presses on your needs and solves your problems. No one's making you buy, and I'm just going to keep running experiments yeah. to keep dialing it up for my my, my clients because that's what I, I, I like to do. I think again, it, and I keep saying it comes back to like if you have a bit of an inboundy approach, a bit yes. of a, like a value-driven approach, it makes a difference. Because exactly. I, I read this article recently by Mark Schaefer, and he was talking about how technology in every other industry is advancing the world and, and making things better, but in his industry, marketing it's just becoming increasingly annoying. Mm. That was his point, that was the basis of this article. And, and, and in some ways, yeah, I mean, the way, it, you know, the way that now in Facebook Messenger, you get these kind of clickbaity things mm. cro cropping up, that's annoying, and yeah. it's suddenly, it's, it's, it's intrusive, but that's, uh, my argument is that, that that's the marketers that are doing it, that's the, the w when you click mm. through, they're not giving you any value. If something came through that yeah. was, perfectly tuned in with what I wanted and needed at that point, then yeah. that's great and that's great marketing. Yeah. And as you said, you can avoid it. And if yeah. it's not too aggressive, um, my wife and it's Anne always talks about how she gets uh, now in Facebook, these awesome, she loves like vintage 50s style dresses and she just gets these mm. ads for like amazing dresses all the time from these different kind of yeah. boutique stores that she loves just because mm. yeah. she's had some good marketing on there and she would never I have keep found them. All those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, Here right. he goes. Back to <laughs> <it>. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they, you keep okay. going. Yeah, it's, it's based on your interest. That's the thing. Oh. If, if your wife doesn't like it, or if you don't like the dildos, right, you can yeah. just clear your cookies. You don't have to have it. And it's oh. the thing of like, I don't like Facebook ads. Guess what? You know, you didn't pay for Facebook. This is how you're paying. You're yeah, surrendering you your product. data. You are the product, right? Yeah. Same with Google. Sign out. Clear your cookies. You, you can be empowered. You're like, oh, I don't. Some people don't know. Okay, open up Google and say, how do I stop being followed by this? Like, yeah. you get Gmail for free. You get Facebook for free free, what that means is we get to market our, mm. our clients' products and services to you. Yeah. Don't like it, don't play the game, switch off. It's probably more healthy for you anyway to go on a digital detox, but don't come whinging to me. I remember <laughs> I remember a campaign that we ran. Right. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Switch off. Yeah. I, remember, I remember a campaign we ran for, a, for an energy client uh, a while ago, uh, for, for social, but they all, we also did sort of display and, and, and PPC advertising for them on the side. And um, they wanted, they were sort of the underdog. Yeah. Know, they didn't have the reach, they didn't have the media spend to go after the big, big, big six. 
Mm. And so we thought about the reactive planning idea, the the, the, the Durex example that I gave you earlier. <laughs> yeah. um, in a way, for, again, from an energy point of view, it's not a sexy thing to necessarily market, but there are ways of getting around it. Mm. So we, we created this um, reactive planning um, uh, template um, uh, where we sort of knew that there were certain moments within the within the calendar, within a specific period of time, that people would be talking about certain things from social, social listening and mm. from answering what the sort of the environment looked like. Um, and when things cropped up, we were able to sort of retarget them with a real-time bidding activity through Lovely. through Twitter um, and Facebook, and then using the metrics off the back of that to then apply to content, to um, the display, and so on and so forth. But we, what we saw was what we were tapping into moments of association with the brand through um, through these reactive activities and through targeted campaigns yeah. that were going to get them the exposure that they needed. That we had people seeing the ad. See, well, seeing a conversation, seeing the ad, and then switching to that brand off the back Wonderful. of it, which is exactly what you want. So it's performance-driven exactly. creative. So you know, we had people saying, oh, "I've just seen the ad from X." Um, I, I think we targeted all their mm. all their competitors in all, all the forums where people have a hot, complete bitch fest yeah. at energy suppliers, and we we saw people complaining about their energy providers. So we targeted them with an ad um, and said, "We hear that you're you know mm. unhappy with your energy provider. Feel you know." <laughs> come, come to us kind yeah. of thing but uh, in the sense that you know we actually tailored the copy to match what they were bitching about well, yeah. and if the energy um, provider is actually offering them a better service, a better service. For solving a problem for and them, we so. saw conver again conversation spike and we saw people directly responding to the ad so this uh, yeah the intrusivity is is useful and I think the people that get really upset about it they're getting upset about their thoughts about oh I don't like people following me or looking at me or whatever and it's like well then get off the internet mm -hmm. you yeah. know like there's nothing bad that's happening to you like statistically you're gonna yeah you're more likely to die in a car crash cancer there's some serious things that you could probably improve in your life mm. have a better diet not you know <laughs> don't don't drink drive like actually worry about things that are actually going to impact you physically but stop working yourself up about oh I don't like the fact people following me or oh they're marketing to me because I'm whinging about my energy supply I don't like that okay yeah. then check out just go and meet people in person and yeah. whinge about it in person. Yeah, but, then exactly. weirdly, but then weirdly on the other side of that, they, they love the idea of the kind of the fame aspect of a brand actually having a conversation with them because yeah. they feel they feel like it's sort of almost elevated them slightly mm. that they have this direct dialogue or conversation with someone. Because yeah. they're quite sad because nobody talks to them. No one talks to them. They, they, you so know, they have like, issues. Oh, right. <laughs> we're making these horrible people that don't like the internet. Can you relate? Because it feels like you're... I'm quite yeah. sad. <laughs> oh, no. Come oh. on. I feel like you're welling up. <laughs> yeah. Should we have a group hug? Or, or would that be weird? <laughs> Maybe at the end. Uh, well, <laughs> not that I haven't been drinking beer yet. Sassy so, so. at the end of the session. Yeah. <laughs>